arriving at the throne room, Han saw that Helania and Queen were waiting for him. The two of them looked to be prepared and ready to face whatever the world threw at them. Considering his ability, they didn't need to bring the general supplies when traveling around the world, like back on Earth. He remembered when he would go camping with his friends, the amount of time and preparation that was needed getting to the site and getting everything ready when they arrived. Technically, Han knew that he could just arrive back in his chambers if he wanted, when they needed to rest, but that didn't feel like a fun idea. Maybe if he became bored of working it, he would just teleport himself back and enjoy his bed. Thinking about his bed brought up ideas of cuddling with Helania, Queen, or both. This is probably what was different about the things he had read or watched versus being in an actual environment. Han never understood why the main characters would hold themselves back and act all wishy-washy when it came to relationships. If they are OP, they should just enjoy all the benefits that came along with it instead of restraining themselves. He knew that if he asked any of his creations to cuddle with him, they would be ecstatic and feel blissful at the opportunity. Master, we are ready to depart at your command, Helania informed him as he neared her. Standing next to her, Queen looked excited at the prospect of traveling with him. Chuckling at Queen's expression, Han asked, Are you looking forward to seeing the outside world? Compared to the world you have created inside here, I do not believe that anything out there could compare. I merely look forward to being by my master's side, ready for any of his needs. Queen answered, bowing her head. Han didn't miss how she blushed before she was able to tilt her head down, trying to hide her expression. She looked adorable the way she reacted around him. So that they could all see, Han projected an image of the kingdom from an aerial view. We are currently located here, where the red dot is located. I'm curious to see what the nearest village looks like, so we will teleport ourselves a little ways away and enter the village. To enjoy ourselves, remember not to create any disturbances that would reveal ourselves unless the situation calls for it. I guess that the people in this kingdom can't even be compared to our abilities. Master, we shall follow your command. It would be an insult to you, our creator, for those pests to think that they could reach your perfection. They should be grateful that you would even consider walking amongst them, replied Helania. I agree, Master, Queen added in fervently. Laughing at how serious they looked, Han quietly said, Remember, that we are doing this to enjoy ourselves. The idea of walking around this world with my bewitching creations is something I am looking forward to. He smiled at them and twitched his fingers upwards to have them come to him. Trying to hide their smiling faces, they walked over to him. Reaching out to both of them, holding their waist on either side of him, he felt the warmth of their body. Leaning his head to the nape of Queen's neck, he breathed in the womanly smell of her and kissed it tenderly. Master, I thought we were going to the village. She cooed and shyly moved her hips to caress against him. Pulling away, Han ordered Helania, take us to just outside of the village. Instantly, the three of them were standing on a grassy field and could see off in the distance signs of the community. Walking towards the village, they noticed that there was a wall that surrounded it. Seeing it up close, the quality of it looked relatively cheap as if they just took a bunch of trees and after cutting off the branches, they tied them together. The bark of the tree was still on it, which seemed to be unusual considering historical pictures Han had seen before while checking out various websites. He wondered if the time period he was in was the reason or if the village wasn't wealthy enough to afford a different wall. Looking to his left, Han noticed a path that led up to an entrance that had people with weapons guarding it. From the looks of them, they looked more like militia, not part of a formally trained military. The guards just had some kind of helmet, different style on each head, and a flimsy looking spear for both of them. 
Hold it right there! One of the guards yelled at him as Han, Halania, and Queen approached them. Han tried to hold back from laughing because they looked ridiculous the way they were just standing there. Did they think they would be able to protect the village? He signaled for Halania and Queen to hold while they waited for the guard to approach them. What business do you have? The guard asked him. Han noticed the guard looking at his creations. By the guard's poorly hidden lewd expression, Han could tell that the guards found it too attractive. He didn't care about the way the guards looked at either of them, considering he could wipe out this entire village if he wanted to and so found the guards to be rather amusing. My companions and I are travelers and saw this village and thought we should check it out. We're here out of mere curiosity. The guard considered his answer and replied, There is a fee to enter the village for newcomers. It will be 50 coppers for each person. We are new to this area, so could you explain the currency? One platinum is a thousand gold, one gold is a hundred silver, and one silver is a hundred coppers. The guard explained, looking a little confused at having to explain such a basic concept. Han thought it interesting how the currency was similar to games and light novels. It made sense, those being precious metals, but just interesting how it was similar to things he had read. The only problem was that he didn't have any currency, so he decided just to create a piece of gold. He reached into his pocket and pulled out a gold nugget. Opening up his hand, he showed the guard the gold nugget. By the guard's reaction, the amount was something he hadn't seen before. My, my lord, I uh, uh, apologize for my behavior, he stuttered, afraid that he had offended someone powerful. You gave no offense. Han said, waving his hands to let the guard understand that it was all water under the bridge. He did wonder what this person would think if he knew what he could do if he were offended. Part of him thought about what the image of a person's spine being pulled out through their mouth would look like. Think it would cause too many annoyances, Han dismissed the idea. The other guard looked confused by his buddy's response, so he walked up to them to find out. Seeing the gold nugget in Han's hand, the blood drained from the guard's face. It looked like the other guard would faint after seeing such wealth being casually presented. Sir, I'm sorry to say that I don't have the ability to change for that amount, so please feel free to continue to our humble village, my lord and his ladies. The guard slowly composed himself. Even though he looked like a militia man, he seemed to have some professionalism in him. Laughing softly, Han just said, Do not worry about change. Even with this amount, I will be fine. Divide it amongst the two of you and give it to your family if you have any. I'm sure they would appreciate it. After placing it in the guard's outstretched hands, the three of them continued to the village. Master, you are a benevolent creator. Those cretins did not deserve your compassion. Queen whispered to him. She didn't want to draw attention to themselves, considering she understood that this was Han's wish. The interaction between those two guards did seem to bother her, so she felt the need to comment on it. Such insolence was something she would like to deal with, but didn't want to go against her beloved creator. I agree, Master. You should have allowed Queen and me to wipe those pitiful creatures into oblivion. Helania concurred. Raising his hand to indicate he didn't want them to continue, the both of you understand why we are out here. I only want to observe what it is like out here so that kind of action could ruin my fun. Yes, master, the both of them said, ashamed about being reprimanded and feeling like they had disappointed him. Once past the entrance, Han looked around at the village. The houses looked like they could fall apart by a stiff breeze. It seemed like this world had some concept of structural engineering, considering they were built using some kind of brick and the roofs had shingles. He expected the roofs to be created by thatching, but it looked like the technology in this kingdom had progressed. Though the homes and walls looked dilapidated, the villagers looked to be in good spirits. They went about their daily tasks with a smile on their faces. 
though you could tell that work had taken a toll on them. Compared to his previous life on Earth, though the work may have been tough at times, average people didn't seem to look as aged as they did. He wondered if this was due to better overall nutrition or the average work was easier with technological improvements. There was some family who looked to be preparing meals in a communal kitchen, likely for midday meal. Seeing them getting ready to eat made him think about Brittany. Brittany, he thought in his mind. A gentle voice responded to his thought, Master, is there anything you require from me? I was just thinking about you and how I would enjoy a steak dinner when I'm ready for my meal. Have the chef think up of a good steak meal. I will contact you when I'm hungry. Inform the chef that I will need two additional meals prepared since Halania and Queen are accompanying me. He informed her. I eagerly await your command. I will let the chef know about your wishes. Brittany acknowledged respectfully. The ability to just speak to whoever he wanted was extremely convenient, especially compared to using a phone. Instead of going through the whole process of selecting an individual, he could now just think of the person and begin talking. With his creations, they would prioritize him over anything they were doing. Han wondered if this was how a CEO or high executive's life was like, where everyone under him bent to his will. The difference is probably related to the fact that his creations would do anything with near religious zeal to fulfill his command. There was no doubt about their motives, unlike even a lot of actual religious figures. If you would ask them to kill themselves, they would probably do it with a smile on their face. As he walked, villagers would often glance at them, trying to figure out who they were. Just looking at his and his creation's outfit would indicate that there was a difference in socio-economical standings. He was sure that his current outfit, the same outfit from Earth, and his creations, the ones he looked created, looked far superior regarding material and quality. With the wave of his hand, Han could have changed their entire situation, but he didn't feel like doing this. It was like playing a video game and going into the code to make alterations. What would be the fun in doing then? He glanced at one of the older women who was carrying a large basket on her head. Nothing stood out about her, but a look of determination in the face of everything made him notice her. Coming up to her, Han quietly took the basket off of her head. She looked at him with a look of surprise, wondering who the hell he was. Lady, please allow me to carry this for you. He gently smiled at her, oozing with charm. Looking confused, all she could say was, my, my lord, there is no need for you to do this. What kind of man would I be if I allowed such a charming lady to carry such a heavy burden? He softly spoke to her. Where are you taking this so that I may send it to its destination? Han inquired, stopping her from further protest. I need to take these to my neighbor's house, she told him. Seeing him indicate that he would be following her, the woman continued to walk. Both of her hands were clasped together in front of her as she led the way. Looking closer at the woman, Han guessed that she was in her mid-thirties. She had her hair tied in a single braid that went all the way down to the base of her back. It gently swung back and forth to the rhythm of her steps. Her outfit was a one-piece dress, looking very conservative with how the shirt went down to her ankles and sleeves covered her arms. Even though she looked older, her ass was very shapely and probably maintained by a continuous working environment. Why are you taking? Looking down, he noticed it was of various roots and plants. Plants to your neighbors, he inquired. Looking back at him, she replied, I go out of the village to gather various plants for food. The villagers pay me a couple of coppers for my services. That is rather commendable for a lady such as yourself, he told her, slightly impressed by how hard these people work to survive. Moving her head forward, she said, I am no lady, my lord. I am just a simple village woman. Do you have a husband or family to help you in your endeavors? He probed. Looking down, she murmured, My husband was killed by a monster in the forest near here. 
he would hunt them to gather various parts to trade with the traveling merchant. My family passed away from a sickness that hit this village several years ago. My current task helps me provide food for myself and pay the taxes to the king. Though this sounded like a painful memory, her voice didn't fluctuate much. This was probably due to how difficult her life was already, and thinking about such things wouldn't help. Gathering all these plants for just few coppers sounded like a various arduous task. His parents was very similar, having to work hard for meager pay compared to his friend's parents, who were often financially well off. Even with all of his powers, he couldn't shake off the memories of his past and how powerless he often felt. The world felt like a playground for only a few, while everyone else was abandoned to squeeze out a living. He remembered having to sleep in his car while he was attending school because he couldn't afford a place to stay. A friend of his offered him to sleep on the floor for no rent, but his roommates didn't demand that he pay. Even though these people considered themselves to be pious individuals, they still demanded his money to pay for living like a homeless person. Scenarios like these made him question humanity and how they claimed to be altruistic but were self-serving. Reaching their destination, the woman knocked on the door of a neighbor. A fairly nice looking man and woman answered the door. They saw who it was and their face showed a faint look of disgust. It wasn't enough to make it visible, but Han had seen enough people look at him that way to be able to recognize it. I have returned with the food you have requested, the woman said, trying to sound upbeat. Glancing over at the basket he was carrying, the woman sneered and said, You expect us to give you money for those pathetic plants? They look all butchered by your horrendous gathering skills. Even the last ones we requested were all torn up and low quality, the man chimed in. Looking annoyed, he said, Even though they look horrible, I'll at least give you a piece of copper for the bunch. I don't want other people to accuse me of theft, so this amount should cover it. He went back into his home and came back with a single copper piece. Tossing it at the woman he accused, Next time, I expect you to do a better job or else we won't give you even a single copper. I'm sure some people would be grateful and do a better job than you could. The woman bent down and picked up the single copper coin from the ground. She didn't defend herself and instead just took the abuse the couple was giving her. Thank you for your patronage, she said, and took the basket from Han's hands and presented it to the couple. Receiving the basket, the couple went in and slammed the door on her. Turning towards them, she smiled and said, My lord, thank you for your assistance. If there's anything I could assist you on, please let me know. Would you know if this village had an inn? He asked her, trying not to embarrass her after witnessing everything. I'm sorry, but our village isn't large enough to have an inn. Most people pass our village on their way to their destination. Even the merchants that come around will camp outside with his armed guards. She answered apologetically. Seeing his frown, she said, I hope this isn't presumptuous, but if my lord and la my ladies are willing, I offer my home. We would be honored by a gracious offer, he said to her. 